Hey everybody, Matt Lasko here. Uh, thanks a lot for joining. Something new we're going to try. Uh, you've seen us do a lot of videos and we try to share some messages and programs and incentives that Ford might offer, but we're, we're a community dealer. Uh, we spend a lot of time in the area and we want to educate our customers as much as we can. So this is something that is completely consumer based. Uh, you'll see that we're going to try to interact with you as much as we possibly can. Um, I actually, if I've got my phone right here, if you're watching and you want to ask, a com uh, ask or comment any questions, you can do that. This is something that is not to teach you what 199 payment we have. It's something to help you with your automotive experience and ownership. So you'll see us as we develop this program. I'm going to have some guests on the show. This is Blake Bone. Blake actually works with us. He's our finance manager now. I'll tell you a little bit more about his history and why he's here. But I'll have a vendor on that might uh, uh, do a product that helps with maintenance on your car. Uh, I can have experts in the field that might know a ton about trucks. Uh, I want your feedback to give me those topics and bring the people that you want to answer questions about. And hopefully uh, that question that you sat around at the kitchen table and asked, hey, when do I need new tires or what should I do about my antifreeze, whatever it may be, we're here to help answer those questions. Uh, so today's topic, uh, something that was picked by our, our viewers and, and uh, followers on Facebook, they wanted us to talk about leasing. We're going to try to touch on a few different topics within leasing, but also bring in a, a, a person that's purchased and leased from us that we can tell their experience. And Blake and I are going to try to point out some of the things that were asked to us that are the doubt or the question about leasing. So um, give you a little background about why I've got Blake here. I'll let you introduce yourself. Um, Blake has sold cars for us. He's leased cars of his own. He was also our lease manager and now is a finance manager. So he's really seen a lot of different areas within leasing, which is the same reason I'd love you to pop some comments in and ask him any questions because he's been in that office with a customer that had a question about a product or he's been that person that's leased a car of his own and got out of a lease early. He's a great person to ask for that type of stuff. So uh, Blake, introduce yourself. Tell me where you're from. Hey, everybody. Uh, Blake right here from Fenton, Michigan. Grew up in Linden. I've uh, been actually here with Lasco for about four years now. It, initially I started coming here because of a, a few mutual friends that actually worked here that I bought and leased vehicles from as well. They did such a great job and I like the company and everything that I, I joined on after I had done a couple things and found a really nice fit and really really like it here. Cool. Well let's let's kick off with a couple basics. I, I uh, you see you folks you see me I've jotted down a couple notes but we want this to be as interactive as possible so I want to start off with some of the basics of leasing and uh, tell me a little bit about how the miles per year work on a lease and what happens if I go over my miles per year on a lease. Absolutely. Uh, first off, I kind of want to kibosh some of the, the lease things. Everybody thinks of a lease as, as a rental. A lease is, is by far probably one of the furthest things from a rental. You have a vehicle that you get into, if you do a, a two-year commitment, a three-year commitment, even a 39-month commitment, it's a partial purchase. You're paying for the portion of the vehicle that you're using for that period of time. So at the beginning you say, I want to do 10,000 miles a year, 12,000 miles a year, whatever your mileage is, and that's prorated over the term. Kind of lets Ford know what they think the vehicle is going to be worth at the end. Uh, when it comes to that, if you say I want to do 10,000 miles a year and you go over, at that point in time you get charged a little bit of a mileage fee at that point from anywhere from 10 cents to 20 cents a mile. But to put that in perspective, 20 cents a mile with 10,000 miles over is only about $2,000 when it comes to turning your lease in, which I would say probably nine times out of 10, and you would know this better, we have rebates that are much, much more than that. And discounts, if you're a supplier of Ford or a Ford employee or a friend or a family member of somebody that works for Ford, we can absorb that relatively easily into the deal. Very good point. And folks, it, it, he, he said something I'll reiterate there. It, it really isn't just a, a rental scenario where in your car. When you lease a vehicle, it's yours. You get to personalize it. it, it you drive it every day. It, you have the ability to buy it later. So maintaining it is part of your job to take care of the car you might buy down the road. And like he said, Ford and, and many manufacturers, because this isn't just about what we sell, it's about your experience. They usually do give you some type of a program that gives you some extra incentive when you come out of your lease that might help absorb something like mileage or a couple payments remaining so you can get out early. So there's a lot of versatility to it. Um, here, here's another one that I've been asked for, uh, and I touched on it for a quick second, but 
Uh, let's say I've leased my vehicle uh, and I didn't drive hardly any miles and I kept it in great shape and I flat out love my car. I'm done. It's 36 months in. Uh, what do I do? Uh, it, it, Give me some idea of, of how that breaks down. In, in many of the scenarios, we, we have such a strong, what we call as a lease book. We keep a really good relationship with our customers and make sure that they're comfortable throughout the whole entire process. Everybody that we deal with on a personal basis, selling them a car, leasing them a car, even talking to, to them in the community, we want to make sure that they are in the best case scenario that they could possibly be in. So when it comes down to somebody that doesn't drive a vehicle quite as much as they expected, you're almost in one of the best spots possible because at the end, you have the opportunity to trade out of it. In some occasions, people come out ahead because they said, I'm gonna use 15,000 miles per year, and they only ended up driving 8,000 miles per year because they went on a vacation with a husband or somebody out of the country. You never know what your scenario is gonna be. The great thing about that is even you have your other people that do a little bit over on the mileage and everything like that, and for us to trade you out early and maybe be able to soak up some of that mileage that you had used as well, gives us that chance also. Um, I would say it's one of those things that we look at on a month-to-month a -month basis. We have somebody that takes a look at our lease portfolio and makes sure that everybody is in the perfect spot to be able to get either out of a vehicle or into something that fits their lifestyle a little bit better. Uh, let's say you met the person that you love, you end up getting together, getting married, and have a kid, and you were driving a Focus before, and now all of a sudden you need a Fusion. You never really know what your life's going to bring, and we always want to give you the chance to be able to take care of that when you need to do it, not when you have to. So if, if I'm one of those guys that drove, uh, I set up a 15,000 mile release and I only drove 8,000, um, at the end of it, you know, I have a buyout price. Mm -hmm. uh, if I have hardly any miles on mine, uh, uh, is my buyout price going to change or, or do I, am I protected there? Your, your buyout price is going to be upfront determined by Ford on the mileage that you agreed to initially. But your buyout price isn't necessarily what the value of your vehicle is. Your buyout price is guaranteed. So let's say you do 15,000 miles a year, and instead of going 8,000, you drive 18,000 miles per year. Your buyout price at the end is still the same. It's not going to change up or down. And it really puts those people that might go over a little bit and end up deciding to buy their vehicle. It might be worth the actual dollar amount that they want to buy it for at the end than paying too much for it. Okay, great. Um, you, you talked about uh, someone that might have needed to change a vehicle. Uh, some of the things I've seen in my experience is a, a lifestyle type of change. So if uh, it, it, I'm, I'm in a 36 month lease and I've had it for 12 months and things are going fine, but now job change, I can get a raise, but I've got to drive 50 more miles a day. Um, what are my options? Do I just keep driving and run out of miles or do I have a chance to get out of that lease early and, and set something up with proper mileage? Absolutely. Always have the chance of getting out of a lease early. A lease isn't a, a solid commitment. Like I said, when it, when it comes down to it, you can compare a three-year lease to a six-year buy. Just you only have a three-year buy at that point. So at the end of six months, if your situation changes and you want to come in and see what we have for an opportunity to be able to get you out of your lease at that point, you haven't hardly put any miles on. Uh, we have a really nice high resale value on that particular vehicle. We trade you out of it. In many cases, you have rebates and incentives and Ford always, in many cases, will offer a loyalty or even if you're in a competitor lease and you can't get them to do anything for you, Ford will also offer competitive programs as well when it comes to getting out of those. Uh, it, it's really going to come down to the trade in value, making sure that we can do everything we possibly can. Uh, we have probably some of the best values seen around are, are lots huge when it comes to pre-owned. So when we're, we're moving a lot of vehicles when it comes to our pre-owned side, we always love to see these low mileage leases or even a higher mileage lease because we can make sure that the, our, our next customer is taken care of as well. I had a comment come in here uh, I'll touch on real quick. Uh, Jesse uh, wrote in and asked about uh, residualizing uh, an accessory at the time of sale. Great question. Um, so we talked about how a lease is your car. You're not renting it. Well, uh, if you're getting an F-150, uh, for an example, and uh, you're going to use your truck, you want to uh, add a bed liner to it or, or some other Ford-approved accessories, if you lease that car and drive away and then you have to get a bed liner, you're going to have to write a check for whatever it is. Let's say simple numbers, I'll say it's a $300 bed liner. You spent full $300, and when you turn your lease in, you could always pull it out if you wanted to keep your bed liner, or you turn it in with it. With leasing, if at time of sale you talk with your salesperson, most manufacturers offer a program that will allow you to take certain items, 
uh, wheels, bed liners, uh, uh, different accessories, and do it at the time of sale. And the plus side is, let's say that item was $300, and let's say I'm, I'm trying to use very simple numbers so that the math's easy for you. If I did a 50% residual value, which meant that car in three years, they say is going to be worth half of its retail value when it was new. The bed liner is the same thing. So you as a customer only have to pay for half of that item that's residualized. So it actually is a great time to build in some products. We do all our Lasco lifts, those big lifted trucks. If a guy has to come in and write a check for six or $7,000, that's a giant investment. If they're coming in and leasing that thing, then it's all part of the residual and they're only paying their percentage for what they're adding to that vehicle. So it's a great question and uh, I, something I would definitely stress to you if you're, if you're out there and you're viewing or, or, or listening, think about the idea that you really talk with your salesperson or finance manager about something you might add to a vehicle before you drive away because it might save you some money in the long run as well. Um, I had a couple other things. We went through the basics and uh, now I'm going to get into a little bit more depth and, and this is a couple questions that came in from Facebook followers. Um, I'd like to lease right now, but I have a car that I own, and it's uh, uh, currently I'm in a loan. I, I bought this vehicle. I think I might owe a little bit more than, than I currently do, than my car's worth. Is leasing a good or bad idea for me? So, a uh, good example. So, a guy owes $2,000 more than his car's worth. Uh, he's coming in here. Uh, he'd like to lease, but what does he do with his 2000 and what, what's some positives or negatives you think for that type of a scenario? There's actually a, a couple of really good scenarios you can be in at that point. If you have a little bit of negative equity, talking two grand, or if you have quite a bit of negative equity up to six grand, it gives you a chance to get out of that negative equity over the period of your lease. So you come in, you have some negative equity. Uh, when it comes to loans, if, if you're doing it relatively quickly, a lot of people do have negative equity and leases are the easiest way to absorb that. You go in, you get into a lease, it probably lowers your payment from what your loan was at that point in time. And at the end of two years or three years, depending on how long you have that lease, you're back at zero again. So it is a huge opportunity for you to actually be able to get out of that. Yeah, I would agree with it 100%. Um, most of the time, anytime I've coached one of my friends out of a bad situation in a car, something broke and they ended up upside down or whatever it is, leasing is probably the best alternative to get it done fast rather than just writing a check. And, uh, you know, we're talking about some of the more in-depth things on leasing. Nowadays, auto loans, they're averaging uh, as much as 72 months. Well, when you go into a six-year buy, it takes you well over three years to start to catch up to be in positive equity. Your lease is shorter than that in itself, two or three years. So you actually can position yourself into a better buying cycle as a customer by being in a lease. There is a ton of benefits to it. We'll talk about some things that might not work perfect for leasing, but in most cases we can usually find the reason leasing is the best solution for you. Um, let's see, I got another question here. Um, I see a lot of ads on TV. Uh, some say no money down. Some say that sign and drive. Do I really have to put money down on a lease or is it sign and drive like the TV ads? I, that's almost a, a double-sided question for <laughs> I you. Those are a little bit one. more <laughs> difficult. Uh, Break it down really, a couple angles for A couple of different angles. Every, every single time company, somebody comes in and do a lease, you do of course have different things that need to be paid. Do you have to pay them? No. Is it recommended? In many cases, yes. You, of course, have Michigan state tax. Everybody has to pay Michigan state tax or Ohio state tax or Florida state tax. It doesn't really make a difference what state you're in. It has to be paid. So there's a couple of different ways that we could do that. We can work the tax into the deal. So you don't have to bring any money to purchase a lease or to get into a lease, you don't have to bring any money. Does it help in some situations? Yes, absolutely. Uh, when it comes to bringing money down or cash down or any of those particular things, no, you don't have to do that. Um, in, in most scenarios and most of our lessees that work with us and even myself personally, because I lease all of my vehicles and my wife will agree, uh, we always put down our first payment. Do we have to? No. Does it help? Yes, because anytime you get into a lease, you either do a 24-month lease and after you pay your first payment, which is any time that you get into it. So let's say you come in, you put no cash down. Instead of 24 payments, you still only have 23, but the remainder of your payments absorb that first payment. So there are situations to where, no, you don't have to. Does it help? Absolutely. Okay, so it really fits you where, where you need to be. If, if you can come in and see your dealer and uh, achieve a payment that fits your budget and not have to put money down, then that's a, a marvelous option. 
Sometimes a client might have saved up a couple bucks or had a paid off trade. They want to put that down so they can get a really low payment. Also a another good option. He touched on something I'll reiterate to you. So even if you came into us right now and I have a big giant rebate on a car and I can do a lease without any money out of your pocket, when that lease is set up and it's a 24 month lease, your first payment, your first 30 days of driving is already paid for up front when you sign. It just absorbed out of a rebate to cover that. So even though you have the vehicle for 24 months, you'll only make 23 payments on it. Uh, it, it it's just one more little plus to, to leasing. If you can come in and have a great sign and drive or a first payment due at signing scenario, you get into a great payment, not invest a lot of cash down. Uh, I had a customer, I'll bring up a quick thing because this was actually perfectly spoke on. Um, they were in a scenario where they knew that they needed to take some time off of work, but they needed a car and they didn't want to be stressed about, about a payment. So in their case, they came in and put a few thousand dollars down so they could have a $99 payment even though this vehicle is probably a $350 a month car, but that's what fit their situation and prep them up for what they needed. So you can cater it a lot. You gotta to talk to your sales consultant, talk to your, your dealer, and love, tell them what you need so they can cater it to fit what you're trying to accomplish. Let's see what else I got, a couple, uh, one more question in here from a, a listener. Um, <laughs> this is a good one. He's got kids, so do I. <laughs> uh, a friend of mine has a lease and his kids have trashed the inside of the vehicle he ended up buying his lease so he didn't have to pay the the uh, the fees is there anything I can do if I'm gonna lease a car I have dogs and kids um, so I guess we know there's there's option from Ford uh, I can't speak for every manufacturer but touch on, on on what they can do to protect themselves for absolutely when when we have a, a somebody that comes in that maybe has a, what I would call a real life which is kids and and dogs and different activities that they like to do maybe they don't have kids maybe you golf and you want to throw your golf clubs in the back or you do moto like matt and you're pulling your dirt bike into the back of your edge i don't think it'd fit but hey if you did uh we have we have an option called wear care wear care is basically anything excess wear and tear to the vehicle up to five thousand dollars would be taken care of this is something that i've taken advantage of a, a couple of different times I, I pulled in my driveway once and clipped my mailbox and put a little bit of a dent in the back of one of my vehicles took care of it no money out of my pocket i didn't have to claim it on my insurance it doesn't do it instantly it takes care of it when you turn it in but if it's something small that you can take care of during the lease then then go ahead and go with it uh but if it comes to missing keys or worn tires or chips in glass or any of those particular things that you might be worried about wear care does that a hundred percent for you really a, one of those mindless really really easy things to take care of to where you don't have to worry about all of that stuff at the end awesome. one of the one of the other things i wanted to touch on real fast i don't know i don't wasn't going to bring this up initially i, I was going to talk about uh one pay leases there's a lot of people that come in and they're like, well, I just want to buy a really inexpensive pre-owned vehicle or something like that. You can do a one pay lease for pretty close to what you can buy a really nice pre-owned vehicle for at this point. And uh, one of the other things is getting into a lease as a young person. That's honestly one of the reasons that I started out so well credit wise. Uh, my parents learned at a young age that you need credit to buy things in the, in the world, the day and age now. So when I was 18, we went out and got my first lease. Uh, my parents co-signed for me at the end of 36 months i had a paid vehicle which is one of the biggest things that can actually kick off credit when it comes to anyone so if you have a child that's going into college or getting out of high school and they're going into college or they have a scenario to where you're like i'm gonna buy them a vehicle and we're gonna pay cash for it and stuff like that you can really help them set up the rest of their life by putting that little signature on on a piece of paper and saying i'm gonna help you out just more than sending you to college i'm gonna kick start your credit it's a, it's a great point, and I'll really tell you, folks. It, as a parent, you got to remember that you, uh, when when you're going to co-sign for your kid on a 72-month buy, or you're going to buy him an $8,000 used car, you've got a long-term scenario where you might have to help him keep that car running, or you might have to be on a loan for a long time. The lease, if you can get him in that 24-month lease, the car is protected. It's under warranty. Mom and dad know that if they're anywhere in the country, it's going to get fixed by that manufacturer. And then in two years, their credit's built, like he said. So there's a lot of plus to that side of things. Um, so, Blake, I'll give you just a second here. I know you brought a friend in to talk to us. Um, are there any last-minute things you want to touch on that to share with the group uh, as far as your leasing experience at all? 
I, 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 I will continue to lease probably from now until the last day that I have a vehicle, which they're probably going to have to take my keys from me at that point. Uh, but really, I think we touched on a lot of stuff. If, if we have any more questions or anything like that, I'm more than happy to answer any of those questions as well, uh, not only through our, our live feed, but even if you want to call up here and talk to myself, we have a fantastic staff that can answer any question that you can possibly imagine when it comes to either leasing, buying, or trading, or we even do purchases of vehicles outright, and I'm sure Matt even likes to see those as well. So, Very much. Well, uh, without further ado, uh, Ashley, you mind joining us for a moment? So uh, I I'll introduce Ashley, and, and Blake's known her for a bit. She's got a couple cars from us, but I'll tell you, she was literally just called up and said, do you have a little bit of time on Wednesday? So she was not aware of what she sat in for. So um, come on, slide over a little bit here so we can get you in the, in the mic and uh, either introduce yourself or Blake will. And we'll t I got a couple questions to chat with you about. This is Ashley. I've uh, known Ashley for quite some time. It really just comes down to one of the reasons I thought she would be the best fit for this is because she's gone through a lot of the changes that everybody goes through. Uh, went through college, went through school, got a job, met a husband, has a family, and has done a couple few different transactions with me as well to make sure that her vehicle fits her lifestyle. Awesome. Well, thank you for coming up. No um, I guess a couple quick questions I jotted down to, to get things started off. Do you remember what your first car was? Do you remember what my first car was? <laughs> I don't. I think I, it was a Grand Am. Okay, I don't remember yeah. what year. It was black, and I had to carry a jug of water with me to put in the um, radiator because right. it would overheat. That's an example of where we mm -hmm. wish we could have got a release, <laughs> Mom and Dad. <laughs> um, great. Yes. Uh, so you've owned one. That was a, a, yes. a buy. Uh, uh, have you owned a couple versus leased yes. a couple? Okay. These, um, my husband and I currently have two leases, and those are our first two leases. We've always owned our cars before. We've always gotten um, pre-owned vehicles. Mm -hmm. We crossed our fingers and hoped that they were the good. We looked at Carfax, yep. always made yep. sure that they were what we wanted and hoped that the mileage was low enough that it would get us through our payments because we never made that much money. So we yep. had to finance them for several years and hope that the car lasted yep. um, the same amount of time that the payment did. So I know that uh, because you've known Blake, you trusted him a lot yeah. and, and, and you got to the leasing. Was there some scenarios during the purchase part of things that um, you did run into those uh, uh, repair scenarios or a car not lasting the length of a loan? Uh, maybe you could share a little and we could, you know. Well, more so we had um, we had bought a vehicle. We had no payments on it. It died. Like the engine died. I remember I came in here and I saw him and I was like, listen, um, Brad needs to go to work tomorrow and I don't have a car. Um, we need help. We want to buy one. I don't want to lease. And he said, why don't you want to lease? And I said, because we always drive more miles than we think that we need to. And I don't want to get stuck in some payment game that I can't handle. Um, like was awesome. He set us up with the right person. Uh, we ended up leasing our first Ford vehicle, um, and then we had a baby. We found out I think two months later that we we were pregnant, yeah. and I thought, crap, we just <laughs> we just leased a Focus, and uh -huh. now I have this baby coming, and I don't know what I'm going to do. So we tried to we tried to trade it in, and yeah. he said, well, let's get your other vehicle instead of trading this in because it it wasn't that far into the lease. Yeah. We ended up leasing a bigger vehicle, and we were very happy that we did because the other one was used. It was not going to last. Um, the lifetime of the payment it was it was a bad choice on our part but he usually hooks us up in, in pre-talk you brought something up that i think is really important so mm -hmm. um you, you mentioned how you've been buying pre-owned cars and you needed a larger vehicle and uh, one of the things you mentioned was is you knew you needed this larger vehicle mm -hmm. but if you went to buy that whether it was new or pre-owned mm -hmm. the payment of something of that dollars was out of your budget always and mm -hmm. and the the lease fit to what you were trying to accomplish. Right. So uh, it, the part for, for the, the viewers that I, I want you to understand is there's the scenario where you might need a vehicle and you might think that payment on the vehicle you need can't get there. Leasing might actually make that happen. And it, you have to entertain the idea of that because there are people out there shopping with, used car values are really high. Well, they're, they're high because people are looking for that big vehicle and a low payment. Mm -hmm. Well that also makes it so lease payments are better because their resale is better down the road. So that's something to remember. Um, in your leasing so far, has uh, there any, been any uh, scenarios where you've, uh, and I know how our store works, but uh, uh, let's let's say you had a repair you needed to get done. Mm -hmm. um, the vehicle was gonna be down, uh, it, it's under warranty. Uh, tell me your scenario uh, if a vehicle goes sure. down and, and how that works for you sure just recently we had some car trouble my daughter and I were on our way to the splash pad it was I believe it was last week it was 
very hot out. Um, we're driving down the expressway. We had some car issues. My husband was at work. I couldn't get a hold of him. Um, the last thing I remember from my experience here with Blake was if you have any trouble, let me know. He said, give me a call or you have roadside assistance. So I picked up my phone. I called Blake. He answered. I couldn't believe that he answered. Um, I said, I'm on the side of the road. I'm, I'm going to start the car again. I'm going to bring it into the dealership. And he said, what are you doing today? And I said, I have a play date at the splash bed. He said, okay, I'm going to take care of you. So we got in here. I think it was within an hour. We had a, a rental. Um, within 24 hours, I got a phone call. The car was ready to go. I came in. The um, guy out at service, he transferred the car seat for me because I had my daughter, which was super nice. I, I can't do that myself. I'm kind of embarrassed to say that, but my husband always takes care of that. Yeah. You know, it was just, the service was amazing. And I think we missed 45 minutes of our time at the splash pad, which was awesome. Um, we were so excited that we were taken care of like that. So uh, I know that that one was under warranty. So the courtesy yeah. car was, was free. Yeah. Um, that if you were in one of your pre-owned vehicles and it broke down on the side of the road, who would have been the first call you made? My dad. Uh, yeah, I'm just <laughs> curious, right? <Yeah. laughs> and yeah. if Dad answered, yeah. who does what, yeah. right? Yeah, if, my dad would fix it for me for sure. And that was the luxury of having a pre-owned vehicle before that he could do that. But then once we had a daughter, like once we once you have children, safety is your number one concern, right? No yeah, matter where you're true. going, what you're very doing, true. safety is your number one concern. Pre-owned vehicles just don't always give you that safety depending on how old they are. And for us, mm -hmm. our cars were always older. That was just our experience. So getting a new car was something that we could not have afforded had we not leased. And leasing has been from repairs to making the payments to um, coming in and getting a new vehicle. It, it's just been, it's been wonderful. You couldn't ask for anything better. Awesome. Well, we really appreciate you coming and sharing the story. Is there any last little tips you'd like to share with uh, the, the viewers of um, maybe as you shopped for your lease or, or, or uh, in experience a, a, of looking for a car? I enjoyed coming to Alaska. Oh, I appreciate that very much. <laughs> um, I, we appreciate you coming up yep. here. Uh, I, if you also obviously ever need anything else from, from Blake, uh, uh, reach out. And Now that you've been here, share with your friends. Uh, uh, tell them that, hey, if, if you ever have a cool automotive topic mm -hmm. you want to talk about, sure. uh, uh, share that with us and so we can share it with the rest sure. of the viewers as well. So, yep. All right, great. Um, viewers, are, if there, anyone wants to drop any last comments, let me scroll down and see if I've got anything uh, else here. I think I touched on them all. Um, ben Wiley, thanks for your comment. Uh, uh, ben, here's an example. Uh, leasing payments can go up or down. Uh, ben sells cars for us, and he, uh, he dropped in there and said he actually has a customer that's getting out about 10 months left in their lease, but they're lowering their payment almost $100 a month. So this could have been, I have no idea about this particular customer, but let's say I had a little bit of negative equity. and. I did a 36 month lease and I'm 26 months into it. My payment might be a little higher because I rolled some of that negative equity in. Now I've got some Ford's got lease pull ahead programs and different scenarios. Well, I'm coming in now and my negative equity is gone because I'm almost done with my lease. Now I can actually lower my payment by a ton and get into a new vehicle. That's why we stress to you that if you do have that scenario where you've got to get out of a little bit of negative equity. You, you pay a little bit more of a payment at the beginning, but the savings that will save you over time is huge. It really makes a, a big, big difference. So, Awesome. Well, I thank everybody for their time. Uh, are we about right on, Jay? Good. Well, thanks, everybody, for listening. We uh, look forward to being on here next week. Uh, if you see this feed and you watch this video and you want to be part of uh, next week, uh, uh, whether it's topics, we're going to work on having some live call-ins, or you want to come in like Ashley and sit down with us uh, at the table, we'd be happy to have you. Uh, thanks again. Uh, remember, we're, we want to be your automotive source, not just for buying a car or fixing a car. We, we're your consultant. If you want to ask us a question about anything, reach out to us.